Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you particularly for addressing me as Mr. Grimaldakis. As you know, <laughs> I come from a town that was built by the Greeks, Neapolis, the new town. And I feel equally at home when I am in Heraklion. And as you know, I'm uh, the proud, proud, I feel very proud to be the president and uh, chairman of uh, Mino Online. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great privilege to be here today at the third of Temporiki Shipping Conference. And I wish to thank the organizers, particularly the publication of Temporiki, for the invitation to attend this venue, which is gathering the gota of the Greek and uh, European uh, shipping sector. The theme is what has to be done to keep European fleet competitive. And uh, I must say that in the beginning of the 90s, the European model towards the competitiveness of the European shipping has followed the Greek model. And this was uh, thanks to an extraordinary commissioner, which was mentioned before by the chairman and uh, was the commissioner Vice President of the Commission, Neil Kinnock, but also to the extraordinary President of EXA that at that time was Mr. John Liras, who has done really an extraordinary work to make European shipping competitive. competitive. I think that uh, if at that time the guidelines were not made, there would be no fleet under uh, European flag or there would be very, very little left on the European flag. If today the European flag is very important, we must a lot to uh, John Liras and to uh, Commissioner Kinek. Then the same uh, uh, guidelines were reviewed subsequently, and we had another extraordinary commissioner, which was Loyola de Palazzo, that unfortunately is not here today. And at that time, I was serving uh, as uh, chairman of EXA, and I think they were uh, further also improved, uh, the, these guidelines. That keeps uh, um, the European shipping competitive. But said this, unfortunately, these guidelines are also, are only guidelines for the member states. And uh, not all of the contents of the guidelines are often uh, uh, implemented in many of uh, uh, the states in Europe. Or part of it is not implemented, and of course this makes more difficult the competitiveness of uh, uh, European shipping. In this matter, I think uh, we have been all together. Uh, Greece, Italy, Malta, Cyprus, definitely France, uh, Spain, extraordinary presidents we had also of the European uh, ship owners with uh, my friend Philippe Louis Dreyfus, which has worked very hard to retain the competitiveness of uh, the European fleet. Today, the European shipping plays a leading role, of course, uh, in the world trade, and this must be particularly due to Greece, with the biggest fleet in the world, and the stupid, undisputable leading shipping nation worldwide, and I hold, of course, many Greek ship owners, Fred, in great esteem and admiration for what they have managed uh, to reach in the last uh, decades. But European shipping is continuously under threat. Unfortunately, the real reason is that the growth is in other parts of the globe, particularly Asia. And this doesn't help too much the development of European shipping. New maritime centers like Shanghai, Hong Kong, Singapore, Dubai are a proof that the center of gravity of the world of shipping is slowly but shifting towards Asia. And we should study carefully the reason of such shift and try to address it. When it comes to shipping, I think unfortunately the perception uh, in the world, with the exception perhaps of Greece, is that shipping is 
uh, cruise and containers. And unfortunately, only cruise and containers. Although, if we look at the map of the world fleet, the world fleet that counts is made of 90,000 ships. There are only 400 cruise ships and only 5,000 uh, ships, uh, container vessels. But when you look, read in European world newspaper in America, the only thing, even if they talk about ports, the only thing that counts is how many passengers, <laughs> cruise passengers are landing in a port and how many containers are landing in the port. The rest, nobody speaks about. And unfortunately, the rest is the biggest part of shipping. Tax, like my friend, 17,000 vessels. General cargo, 15,000 ships. Tankers altogether, crude, product, chemical, 12,000 vessels. Balkers, 10,000 vessels. Even my sector, which is often addressed as a niche market, is not a niche at all. The Roro ships are 9,000 in the world, 10% of uh, the world fleet. There are about 7,000 passenger ships, just above 1,000 Roro vessel, and just a little bit less than 1,000 car carriers. So 9,000 ships is 10% 10, 10 of the world fleet. But why, perhaps also because there is this lack of consideration. The numbers also of uh, uh, the, the volumes that we are moving, for perhaps also in my sector, are uh, uh, enormous. Uh, uh, the number of passengers which are moving on ferries is 2.2 billion, only 10% less than uh, aviation. The number of cars which are moving are 260 million, four times the cars produced every year in the world. The number of trailers is 40 million. If you put them together in a queue, they are about 13 times uh, the earth uh, circumference. Also in the Mediterranean, this business is very important. But perhaps in these other two sectors, cruise and uh, uh, also in the containers, there was much more consolidation. If you think that the first cruise operator in the world has about 50% of the bed, either good, if this is good or bad, I don't know. But definitely, 50% of the beds in the crew uh, 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 is on, uh, of course, are on Carnival Line. Uh, if you look also at the container trade, the container trade, I think very soon, the three biggest operators in the world will have 50% with the new consolidation. And if you put the fourth and the fifth, which soon will be the Chinese and, of course, the Japanese with the three Japanese together, perhaps we will have that five containers operator will move 70% of all containers all over the world. In our business, unfortunately, this, it is not at all happening. The rural sector is very, very fragmented, and no operator really uh, is a significant share of the market, although perhaps our company is the first in the world with the various brands that we have. I think that uh, this uh, uh, fragmentation is a limit to the competitiveness of the sector that becomes also vulnerable to other transport modality, road, rail, and for passengers, of course, low-cost airlines. Only the consolidation in the sector will allow further investment, uh, fleet renewal, and technological improvements that are much needed to face the future trade and also all the environmental challenges that uh, were presented by uh, our friends. I think short sea shipping is very important for Europe because the economic and social cohesion among the member states and also the peripheral, particularly in the peripheral area of Europe, that uh, the short sea shipping also is guaranteeing territorial continuity to the island, Italy, Greece, and Spain have a lot of islands, important islands, and also for the protection of the environment because it's the most environmental friendly mode of transport. Although the sector, I think, is the most sustainable uh, of all the transport modality and I think we have delivered a lot 
in the last few years, if you look at the sulfur emission, they have been abated a lot and they will be further abated very soon. And I think also as far as the CO2 emission, I think our business have delivered. I think we have a lack, we have a problem of uh, uh, um, showing what we have delivered because uh, we have increased the transportation of about 15, 17% after the crisis of 2009 and we have reduced the emissions of CO2 of about 17%. And I think this is uh, a, a, a very good result that has been achieved so far. Also, what we have just heard uh, uh, recently is that there is the voice of uh, promoting protectionism and isolation. And this has significantly risen both in the United States, in Europe, and uh, worldwide. And I think in such uncertain political international environment, only a strong and united European shipping sector will be able to, to face this difficult uh, challenge. I will uh, terminate with uh, what I read yesterday on the Financial Times, that is a very nice, statement that we had from uh, uh, the president of China towards uh, globalization and uh, free trade. He said we should not retreat into the harbor whenever we encounter a storm or we will never reach the opposite shore. Thank you. Thank you.